Okay. <clears throat> okay, this is James Possible, a.k.a. DS Domination Dad. And I've had a few people ask me about my settings for the stochastics indicator, or stochastics, however you want to say it. And that's in MetaTrader 4. Now, I'm going to also cover the stochastics indicator that uh, you should be using uh, within the UOP group. Okay, so let's go ahead and move over to MetaTrader 4 and just know if, if you're not on my regular mailing list, just go ahead and contact me on Facebook at James Possible or contact me via YouTube. Either way, I'll get uh, work with you to get you set up. Okay, now we're in MetaTrader 4. No charts are open, so I'm going to go ahead and open up a chart. You see up here, I just clicked on Market Watch. What that does is bring up the symbols. In this case, uh, the currency pairs, because this is Forex. I'm going to right click on one of them, say sh Show Chart. I'll close that window, the uh, Market Watch window. I'm going to double click that to make the chart bigger. Now I'm clicking the uh, pressing the plus sign over on the right side of my keyboard to zoom in on the chart a little bit. I'm gonna click on charts. I'm gonna turn off the grid. That's a little just a little toggle. Okay. <clears throat> just a little too busy for my liking. And then right here at the top, if you just hover, you'll see it says navigator. That's where the indicators are. Now, <clears throat> before I do that, you'll notice this right here is a uh, bar chart. Um, it is similar to a candle, a price candle, or a candlestick, in that you do see the open and the close, and you do have a high and a low all within the same uh, graph. Now, Right here, you have the three settings in MetaTrader 4. You have bar chart. That's where we are. The candlestick chart. If I click on that, you'll see it changes it. This is all the default configuration. And then you have the line chart, which is the least favorite chart. Uh, it can, however, give you a little, if you want to just kind of go back and forth, it will might help you recognize uh, patterns if you're like reading a, a trading book and you're not sure what where the patterns are um, it can actually help you find the patterns um, or if you're in a trading course and so so it could be good for that uh, so let's move forward we're going to talk about the stochastics I'm going to go up here to navigator I'm going to click on that it's a toggle switch so click it to stay on, click it to turn off, and over to the left, here we are. We have indicators. So I'm going to highlight indicators. Now if I just slide straight down under indicators, there is a stochastic indicator. If I click and highlight that, highlight and click that, and drag over the active chart and let go or drop, I get this little prompt, I click OK, and boom, there it is, the fast and slow lines of the stochastic. Now, this is not the chart, this is not the indicator we use in the UOP. If you slide back up here, under indicators, you do see oscillators. Expand that by clicking on the plus, and then down here you see stochastic oscillator. Highlight that, click on it, drag over the active chart, let go, um, the numbers 333, three, three, click OK, and you can see the the difference. Now, this is holding some values that I've already changed. Um, that's one of the things MetaTrader 4 does as you change indicators. It tends to uh, preserve your configuration. Now, I could close the navigator sidebar by 
clicking the little X there or I can just toggle this back and forth this little button up top okay another way to get to these indicators is by insert indicators and what these are the indicators under custom you see all the indicators that are uh, listed below the uh, indicators Let's see if I go over here just click on indicator windows let me close that but you'll see slide down see there's a stochastic the countdown timer zigzag RSI so if I click on insert indicators custom um, you see there's the RSI the parabolic the OSMA momentum and you can see over to the left all those exist as well so these two different ways to get to it let's go ahead and close that window now um, I don't want this top indicator so I'm just going to right click again I'm just right clicking on the chart I'm going to go to indicators I'm going to highlight stochastic and delete now or you can actually um, that's so I had the option to do this I could go here right click on the chart and select the indicator I want to delete or I can actually go to the indicator right click I gotta get it right I didn't click on it there we go now now I'm actually clicking on the indicator um, Once you're on the indicator, just hit delete. Boom, there it is. So if you're, I'm just clicking on black space right now, and you say I just get the regular selection window. But if I can, if you just get onto the uh, indicator, there it is. I can delete it, delete the indicator window. So if there were multiple indicator windows, multiple indicators within this window, it would actually close the window. And let me show you what I mean by that. Let's drag something else down to RSI. Click OK. Oh, MACD, everybody has heard of the MACD. So I'm going to close that. So now I have to get on one of the indicators. Put the mouse over it, right click. And I'm just going to delete the window. Boom. That deleted all those indicators. So if I go back to indicator list, well, it doesn't even show up because there are no indicators on the chart at the moment. Okay, so let's go back to, actually I want to go ahead and insert indicators, oscillators, under oscillators, stochastic, oscillator, 333, three, three. click OK, and there you have it. Now, I did change, you can see my overbought line right here is, uh, I think, a gold color. And it's big dashes. I have a preference to big dashes. So I don't like the little dashes. I find them annoying. Um, <laughs> that's just me, though. At the bottom, the bottom line, the oversold line, same thing, right? So I'm going to right click indicator list, select stochastic oscillator, click edit. Um, now we can also. I can also just go right over the stochastic indicator, right click on, you got to get right on it though, right click on it, stochastic properties, and there you go. So under properties, you'll see colors, so you can change colors, you know, I can go hot pink, no that's light pink, hot pink, there you go. Hot pink, I go back in, indicators, stochastic, edit, properties, and then, uh, you know, I can make this a really fat line. Boom. Crazy, right? Now I'm going to go back. Said I'm just time, I'm going to click on the stochastic. Uh, come on now. Go into properties. Okay, so the levels. And that's what these yellow dashed lines are, the levels. 
you got the 20% mark, the 80% mark. And then, okay, so I had it set at orange. So I can actually change, uh, I don't know, let's go with magenta. Yeah, that works perfect in combination with the pink, right? <laughs> yes, I'm being silly. Okay, but in this same spot under levels, you have the option of defining the lines. So I can do a solid line. Okay, or I can go back to properties. I can do the one you see most of the time is the, the da 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 dots. Don't like, not a fan. Here's the dashed one I use, I, I like. I missed it. And all I'm doing is getting the mouse over the stochastic line, right clicking, and then seeing pro go into properties. Um, and you can see there's a couple other options here. Now, one thing to note here is when you change the thickness of the line, that's that's the default thickness, the first one. But when the second you change it to this, the second line, you no longer have the option of dashes or dots or dash dot. It um, it goes away because the line's too thick. And this is a MetaTrader 4 thing. So you have to have the line thickness set at the first level for the dashes to be active. Okay, and I just had it set, what did I have it set at orange? There we go. I had it set at orange. And then the color I had set at, I don't know, what did I have it at? Let's see. Oh, hang on. I gotta change the thickness of that line. <laughs> okay. And there you have it. So now, now it's back. Um, and I think actually I was using a darker pur purple. I may have been just using a blue violet. Yeah, that looks a little more pops a little bit more. But anyways, there you go. That's how you change it, and you have this same available. Same, you can do the same thing with other indicators as well. Let's just do it real quick. Let's go to trend, and let's uh, just drop a moving average in there. Just leave it like that. Just take the default. And there's a moving average line. So now that was another way to get into the properties of the indicator. If you just double click on the indicator it'll open up property as well so um, showing you a lot of little different ways to do things okay so I'm just gonna go into the properties of the uh, moving average and okay we're not using levels we're just using param these first parameters so let's go Oh, I don't know. Let's change the color to blah. And then there again, see, you have the, the dashes and the dots. And let's do the Morse code setup. And there you go. But again, like I said, once I change the thickness of the line, uh, I lose the ability to have dashes or dots in that line okay so I'm just going to delete that um, and I think that pretty much covers it because really all I wanted to do is walk through the stochastics configuration I could go on and on um, there's so many little things it's actually a pretty flexible environment um, just you know, don't be afraid to play with things. Uh, you, you never know. You might find a setting or configuration that's easier for you to look at than some of these other uh, setups. So this is James Possible. Again, 
contact me through YouTube or on Facebook. It's James Possible. I also go by DS Domination Dad. So, have a great day. Happy trading. Here's to making money. Bye.